Our topic today is the surgery of the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is one of the most important glands in the body. We have to have an idea about the anatomy of the adrenal gland, short notes about the anatomy of the adrenal gland. The weight of normal adrenal gland is approximately 4 gram for each. There are two distinct components of the gland, the inner adrenal medulla and the outer adrenal cortex. The adrenal glands are situated near the upper pole of the kidney. That's why called suprarenal glands. In the, they are enclosed together with the kidney in the retroperitoneal tissue within the gyrota fascia or capsule. The right adrenal gland is located between the right, the right lobe of the liver, the diaphragm, closed to the inferior vena cava. The left adrenal gland lies close to the upper pole of the left kidney and the renal pedicle. And it's covered partly by the pancreatic tail and the spleen. Embryology of the adrenal gland. The two functional parts of the adrenal gland are the adrenal cortex and the medulla. Both have different embryonic origin. The mesodermal cells form the adrenal cortex, while the adrenal medulla is originated from neuroectodermal cells which migrate to the cortex to form the adrenal medulla. The adrenal cortex is arranged in a zonal configuration. The outer zona glomerulosa contains small compact cells and the central zone fasciculata and the inner zone reticularis. The renal medulla consists of a thin layer of large chromaffin cells. Its function is to synthesize and store and secrete catecholamine. Functions of the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands plays an important role in the response to stress. Catecholamine are secreted by the adrenal medulla and corticosteroid, aldosterone and cortisol are synthesized in the adrenal cortex. Cells of the adrenal medulla synthesize mainly adrenaline, also called epinephrine, but also in a lesser extent it secretes noradrenaline or norepinephrine, and also dopamine. These catecholamines act as, an, as a hormone as they are secreted directly to the circulation. Their effect, which is mediated through the receptors on the target organs, and include the cardiovascular system, resulting in an increase in the blood pressure, heart rate, vasoconstriction in the plantain circulation, but it causes vasodilatation in the vessels of the muscles. It is bronchodilator, bronchodilators and increase glycogenolysis. The cells of the zona glomerulosa produce, which is part of the adrenal cortex, produce aldosterone, which, is, which regulates sodium potassium homeostasis. The target organ of the aldosterone is in the kidney, namely the uh, renal tubules, the sweaty gland, salivary glands, and intestinal mucosa. Aldo aldosterone promotes sodium retention and potassium excretion. The most important regulator of aldosterone secretion is the renin angiotensin system. And you know that renin angiotensin system is activated initially in the macula densa with the subsequent conversion of angiotensin in active form of the hormone to its active form angiotensin 2. The triggering agent to aldosterone in secretion is a decrease in the renal blood flow resulting from hemorrhage, dehydration, salt depletion, I mean sodium depletion, orthostasis, renal artery stenosis, or hyponatremia also increase the renin, renin secretion and lead to sodium retention, potassium excretion and increase in the plasma volume. Cells of 
zona reticula fasciculata and reticularis synthesize cortisol and the adrenal androgens, the di dihydroepidesterone and its sulfated form. The dihydroepidesterone and its sulfated form are the precursor of androgen. They are converted in the peripheral tissue, usually the fat. The cortisol secretion is under the control of the pituitary hormone, the adrenocorticotropic hormone, which is produced by the anterior pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is further controlled by the by secretion of corticotrophin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. The serum cortisol level inhibits the release, both the corticotrophin releasing hormone and the adrenocorticotrophic hormone via a closed loop system, which is called negative feedback loop or mechanism. Cortisol has numerous metabolic and immunological effects. It increases the gluconeogenesis lipolysis and decrease the peripheral glucose utilization. It has an immunological function and an increase in the muscle mass. It affects fat distribution, wound healing and bone mineralization and alter the mood. It causes euphoria or rarely depression. It also affects the cortical alertness. Disorder of the adrenal cortex. The the term incidentaloma is defined as a mass in the adrenal gland that is detected incidentally. That's why called incidentaloma. By imaging studies conducted for other reasons other than the, the mass itself, which is not known previously to cause a symptoms or has been present in the previous time. It accounts for more than 70%, 75% of non-functioning adenoma. So about 75% of incidentaloma are found to be non-functioning adenoma, which is discovered incidentally by imaging techniques like CT, MRI, ultrasound of the abdomen. But sometimes the adenoma causing secretion of the corticosteroid or adrenal medulla tumors, pheochromocytoma, or metastasis from other organ, adrenocortical carcinoma, and cons tumor, all that are rare presentation of incidentaloma. These are usually causing symptoms. So that's why they are discovered because they cause symptoms. But incidentaloma usually discovered incidentally without apparent symptoms. That's why 75% are non-functioning adenoma. The other disease of the adrenal cortex is the primary hyperaldosteronism. I mean adenoma or hyperfunctioning of the zona glomerulosa, which secretes aldosterone. The incidence of the Cohn syndrome is defined by uh, primary hyperaldosteronism, sorry, is defined by hypertension as a result of hypersecretion of aldosterone. In a primary hyper, uh, hyperaldosteronism, the plasma renin activity is suppressed as a negative feedback mechanism. Among patients with hypertension, the incidence of Cohn syndrome is approximately 2%. I mean, all patients with hypertension, only 2% of them, they have Cohn syndrome. Pathologically, the most frequent cause of Cohn syndrome is hypertension with hypokalemia and unilateral adrenocortical adenoma. So the most frequent cause of primary hyperaldosteronism is the unilateral functioning, I mean functioning, secreting aldosterone, unilateral adrenocortical adenoma. In about 20, in a less, in a lesser extent, in 20 to 40 percent of cases, bilateral micronodular hyperplasia is present. So this is a, a less frequent than the unilateral adrenocortical adenoma. Rarely, the primary hyperaldosteronism are due to bilateral macronodular hyperplasia or adrenocortical carcinoma. Clinical features of Cohn syndrome or primary hyperaldosteronism. 
Most patients are between 30 and 50 years of age with a female predominance. The hallmark uh, symptoms or presentation of patients with Crohn's syndrome is hypertension. So all those patients presented with hypertension in addition to other non-specific symptoms like headache, muscle weakness, cramps, intermittent paralysis, polyuria, polydepsia, and nocturia. And these symptoms are related directly to hypernatremia and hypokalemia. So hypokalemia causes muscle weakness, cramps, intermittent paralysis, polyuria, polydepsia. All these are related to the, to the electrolyte disturbance. Diagnosis of Crohn's syndrome depend on the key features in the biochemical diagnosis and the assessment of the potassium level at which, in which we uh, always we found, we found the uh, effect of aldosterone secretion is a decreased or suppressed potassium serum potassium level. There is a constant features of hypokalemia and an increase in the aldosterone while the renin activity is suppressed. So the resultant effect uh, or the uh, the aldosterone to plasma renin activity ratio will be increased. Once the biochemical diagnosis is confirmed, MRI and, or CT scan should be performed to distinguish the cause of hypersecretion of aldosterone, which may be unilateral or bilateral disease of the adrenal cortex. Treatment, the first line therapy for primary hyperaldosteronism with bilateral hyperplasia is medical treatment, mainly medical treatment with spironolactone. As you know, spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretics. It's an increase, the secretion of, excretion of sodium and retain potassium. So its effect usually reverse the action of aldosterone. In most cases, Supplemental antihypertensive medication to control the elevated blood pressure is necessary. Adrenalectomy is the treatment of choice in cases of unilateral adenoma, which is the majority of cases. So adrenalectomy for functioning adenoma in a single adrenal gland usually will cure the disease. Other disease of adrenal cortex is called Cushing syndrome. Definition. Hypersecretion of cortisol caused by endogenous production, endogenous production of corticosteroid is known as Cushing syndrome. It can be either ACTH dependent or ACTH independent. The most common cause is, and about 85% is the ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome, or the, at that time we call it Cushing disease, in which the hypersecretion of cortisol is related to the ACTH increase from pituitary adenoma, which secrete excessive amount of ACTH and the resultant effect of this increase is the hypersecretion of the cortisol from the adrenal cortex. Or sometimes the ACTH comes from an ectopic secretion. Some many uh, tumors that are responsible or may secrete an ectopic ACTH like small cell cancer of the lung, carcinoid tumor of the bowel, CRH producing tumors in the medullary thyroid, thyroid carcinoma, neuroendocrine pancreatic tumors are most infrequent causes of ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome. In a brief, this is scheme scheme will uh, show you that the Cushing syndrome is either caused by exogenous administration of steroid, prolonged administration of ACTH or glucocorticoid, this is an exogenous cause, or endogenous, I mean the body secrete the cortisol either ACTH dependent or ACTH independent. The ACTH dependent either the hypothalamic lesion, pituitary lesion, or ectopic hormone secretion as we said. The ACTH independent 
independent. I mean, the a the cortisol secreted from the adrenal cortex in irrespectable or irrespective to the level of ACTH stimulation of the of the pituitary gland. As a result, the ACTH independent causes. I mean, the primary secretion is the adrenal cortex. The ACTH normally will be inhibited. And about 15%, as we said in the previous slide, the, and about 85% of Cushing syndrome is caused by pituitary adenoma. I mean ACTH dependent. So the primary cause is ACTH dependent secretion. And only 15% of patient, the Cushing syndrome is caused by an ACTH independent Cushing syndrome. ACTH independent, which is a low ACTH level. The primary secretion is the adrenal cortex, which act to suppress the normal pituitary gland. So the resultant effect is a low ACTS level. Is this usually caused by a unilateral adrenocortical adenoma, adrenocortical carcinoma, and bila bilateral macronodular or micronodular hyperplasia? These are rare presentation of Cushing syndrome and the most common cause of Cushing syndrome is pituitary adenoma which is an ACTH dependent the less in a lesser extent in about 15 percent is ACTH independent and if it is ACTH independent the most common cause is unilateral adenoma in a lesser extent unilateral uh, carcinoma or bilateral micronodular or micro micronodular hyperplasia clinical features of Cushing syndrome weight gain we usually central and the patients uh, uh, has been has been described in many uh, textbooks as a lemon on a match sticks lemon a lemon lemona mga على اثنين اودان ماشخاط فتشوفون الرجلية المادة thin while the abdomen is obese. So central obesity, a lemon on a, a match stick. Diabetes is one of the features of Cushing syndrome, hirsutism, hypertension, skin changes, abdominal sutrae and facial prethora, ecchymosis, acne, muscle weakness, menstrual irregularities, impotence in male, depression, mania, as we said, cortisol act on the mood of the uh, uh, of, uh, of the patient and also cause some cortical changes, osteoporosis and hypokalemia. And hypokalemia due to the minor, usually the cortisol has a minor aldosterone effect, minor aldosteronic effect. So it causes excessive secre secretion of cortisol, usually cause sodium retention. That's why it's, it's caused hypertension and hypokalemia. It has a minor aldosteronic effect. Diagnosis. Once the clinical case is suspected, according to the sign and symptoms of Cushing, we, measure, we have to measure the serum cortisol, early morning and midnight cortisol. And uh, there will be a... a uh, uh, a difference in the or change in the diurnal variation diurnal rhythm of the cortisol the second diagnostic biochemical test is dex dexamethasone suppression test if the dexamethasone fail to suppress uh, uh, a normal serum cortisol level it, it is usually positive if it is positive, if these tests positive, increase in the serum cortisol and dexamethasone suppression test positive, then we have to do an ACTH measurement. By which, by from this ACTH, we can discriminate one of two types of uh, uh, Cushing syndrome, either ACTH dependent or ACTH independent. In the ACTH independent, in which the ACTH secretion is suppressed or decreased then we have to do CT of the or MRI of the abdomen to detect the cause of adrenal hypersecretion either adenoma which is most common presentation unilateral adenoma or bilateral hyperplasia or carcinoma in a rarity
if the ACTH increased or normal, then we have to do MRI of the pituitary gland, which is in the most common cases, 85% of cushion are situated in the pituitary. Uh, plus minus petrosal sinus sampling, we sample the, the uh, uh, petrosals, which is the venous syringe of the pituitary gland. We sample the vein, venous blood on the, on the petrosal, inferior petrosal sinus to assay the ACTH level. And if negative, I mean if the MRI of the pituitary gland plus minus petrosal sinus sampling, if negative, then we have to do CT of the abdomen to exclude ectopic secretion of ACTH as we mentioned by many types of tumors uh, like bronchogenic carcinoma, carcinoma neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas or carcinoid tumor of the intestine. Treatment medical treatment of Cushing syndrome either used for preparation of severe cases in order to prepare him for surgery or if surgery is not possible such as that a patient who is unfit for surgery in that cases we have to give a medical treatment and the medical treatment usually uh, metyrapone or ketoconazole will reduce the steroid synthesis and secretion in the adrenal cortex. If the patient is, is fit for surgery, then the uh, surger, surgical uh, treatment might be curative for some cases. In the ACTH independent, I mean the problem is the in the adrenal gland. Either according to the CT finding or MRI finding of the abdomen if the problem is unilateral unilateral adenoma so the treatment curative treatment is unilateral adrenectomy if the problem is bilateral bilateral hyperplasia then bilateral adrenectomy in the ACTH dependent I mean either in the pituitary or ectopic secretion if, the, if there is pituitary adenoma then the surgery should be performed through a transphenoidal resection, endoscopic transphenoidal resection of the pituitary adenoma. If the ACTH secretion from an ectopic secretion from a, a, a malignant tumor elsewhere in the body, if it is resectable, then resection of that tumor will suppress the ACTH and it will cure the hormonal disturbance. If the ACTH is unresectable, then bilateral adrenectomy, we have to do, we have to remove the target organ of the ACTH. We have to remo remove both glands in order to remove the target organ of the hypersecretion of the ACTH from that ectopic site. Thank you very much.